The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse The four horsemen described in Revelation chapter 6 are beginning to somewhat show signs of their work. You only need to look at the last five years of the world and you can see signs of their arrival, signs of their effects upon the earth. The book of Revelations opens you up into the future. No other book comes under more scrutiny than the book of Revelation. No other book in the Bible is contested quite like the book of Revelation. And there are churches that actively avoid the book of Revelation. Churches that actively attempt to discredit the book of Revelation. That alone should tell you something about the book of Revelation. I believe the reason the book of Revelation is contested is because of two reasons. Reason number one being the book of Revelation reveals Jesus Christ in a way no other book in the Bible reveals Jesus Christ. It reveals him as he is today. Not as a baby in a manger, but it reveals him as the living one. It reveals him as the almighty. It reveals him as the one with the keys of death and Hades. The book of Revelation exalts the son of the living God like no other book in the Bible. If you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ to a greater degree, go to the book of Revelation. The second reason is because it reveals the future and things to come. I believe wholeheartedly that the book of Revelation is unfolding before our eyes. We are living in just a preamble to the real event. What we are observing now is an introduction to what is yet to come. The vision of the four horsemen of the apocalypse is one of the most intriguing and prophetic visions from the Bible. John was given a vision of four horsemen that represented different aspects of the end times. These horsemen are often referred to as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Revelation chapter 6 verse 1. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. The opening of the seals represented different forms of judgment, and the first four involved horsemen who inflicted different disasters upon the earth. The first horseman, Revelation chapter 6 verse 2, And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The fourth horseman was the rider on the white horse, and he is commonly known as the Antichrist or the false messiah. He comes to deceive people and lead them away from the one true God. This horseman represents the spirit of deception that will be rampant in the end times, as people will be led astray by him and the false prophet. In general, leading up to the Great Tribulation and even during it, there will be a tremendous amount of deception. Mark chapter 13 verses 5 through 6. And Jesus, answering them, began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. The Antichrist will come in a guise of righteousness and will deceive many with his lies. He will lead people away from the true God and towards himself. When we hear of the Antichrist, all we think of is the violence, the mark of the beast, the coercion. But what we need to know is that in the beginning of his rise, he will unite people of the earth before turning on them. Some have suggested that this rider is the quote, conquering Christ, because he rides a white horse and wears a crown. They suggest that he is the conquering Christ who is going around today, defeating the forces of evil in the world. In order to support this claim, they point to Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 through 13 as proof. However, if we look at the surrounding context of the writer in white in Revelation chapter 6 and the writer in white in Revelation chapter 19, we can see clear differences. The Bible is clear when Christ returns to the earth for his second coming, he does so at the end of the tribulation, not at the beginning. And when he does return, he presents a thousand years of peace and security known as the millennial reign. However, in stark contrast, the circumstances that follow the rider on this white horse in Revelation chapter 6 verse 2 is calamitous and cataclysmic. The first rider in white in Revelation chapter 6 is indeed the Antichrist. And it comes at no surprise to us, the Antichrist resembles Jesus. After all, Satan produces counterfeits. 
The second horseman, Revelation chapter 6, verse 3 through 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. The second horseman is the rider on the red horse who brings war and bloodshed upon the earth. We can already see the effects of this spirit in our world today, as wars and conflicts continue to rage on in various parts of the world. Nations have risen against other nations, families against other families, and individuals against individuals. War has been a part of the history of mankind since the very first murder between the two brothers in Genesis, and it will play a major role in the end times. Luke chapter 21 verses 9 through 10. But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The third horseman, Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 through 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked. And behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. The third horseman is the rider on the black horse, who brings famine and economic collapse upon the earth. Within the Bible, the color black is associated with famine. We see this in the following scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 14 verses 1 through 2. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. Immediately the third seal was opened, and John was directed to observe another horse, which was different from the former. The horse that John saw was a black horse, signifying famine, a terrible judgment of God, which will come upon the world in the last days and especially during the Great Tribulation. The one who sat on the horse had a pair of balances in his hand. The black horse represents famine, and its rider had a pair of balances, suggesting that a time is coming when the people of the earth must eat their bread by measures, not out of being conservative, but for the sake of abject shortage of food. In other words, a man will have to work all day in order just to secure food for himself for just that one day. A great number of Bible scholars believe that Revelation chapter 6 verses 5 through 6 is referring to inflation. Inflation is the decline of purchasing power of a given currency over time. A quantitative estimate of the rate at which the decline in purchasing power occurs can be reflected in the increase of an average price level of a basket of selected goods and services in an economy over some period of time. The phrase, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny reflect the inflationary rise indicated in this Bible verse. The prices detailed in this verse are about 12 times higher than normal. This means that it would cost a day's wage to buy the ingredients for a loaf of bread. This describes a time of famine when life will be reduced to the barest necessities. The phrase, quote, see thou hurt not the oil and the wine, refers to the fact that less crucial supplies are available to those who can purchase them. In other words, the luxuries of life will be available for those who can purchase them. Matthew chapter 24 verses 12 through 13. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. The third horseman represents the fragility of our world and how easily our basic needs can be taken away. It is a reminder that hunger and poverty will strike the world amidst hard economic times. People often blame their government institutions, agencies, and leadership when hit by tough economic crisis. Many of them are not aware that it could be a sign that we are moving towards the fulfillment of prophecy. As Christians, we are called to be compassionate and generous towards those who are suffering from hunger and poverty. 
We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves and to use our resources to help those in need. But this will be the opposite of what happens when the third seal is open. The third horseman will bring about hard times that no one will have anything to share out with another. The fourth horseman, Revelation chapter six, verse seven through eight. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was death and Hades followed him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The fourth and final horseman is the rider on the pale horse who brings death and destruction upon the earth. Notice how John saw two personages on this horse. One was death and the other was Hades. And we see earlier in the book of Revelation who holds the key to both these things. It is no one other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter one, verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. As we reflect on these four horsemen, we can see that they represent some of the most pressing issues that we face in our world today. Could it be that these horsemen are approaching? We must be prepared for the return of our Lord by living in a manner that honors God as we prepare for the coming of our Lord.